So in this segment, we're going to be talking about a business, talking about why it's, what it's like to be a third country. Britain's supply chain crisis from the ever great central bylines, which I'm assuming is part of the byline times. If not, then people need to stop using the phrase bylines. Please, like, come up with your own company name, guys. It's just getting a bit weird. But yeah, in a... Sorry, this person says, I run a small independent shop in Market Harbour. Market Harbour, which is, I think, around 30 minutes from where I live. So it's quite close. Uh, my uncle lives there. Nice guy. Um, saying, my business is domestic decorative lighting, big crystal chandeliers from Venice, and ultra-modern Scandinavian fittings from Spanish, German, Czech, Australian, and more. I have a showroom full of examples of what to do, what you can do with lighting. Um, so really bit of a strange business, not going to lie, chandeliers and stuff. I guess it's a rich man's game, or rich person's game. Um, when the UK left the EU in January, we became a third country. For those of us who trade with Europe, business had become very slow and very expensive. So this person puts directly the blame of the issues the UK is facing on Brexit and not that other word which may get demonetised. Come on, YouTube. Generally, costs have risen by around 20%, so that's by about a fifth. Um, that's a very, very sharp increase when it comes to any any product, any business. Some products are now as much as 40% more expensive. No EU traders are fully certain that the what the extra charges are or will be, so they make it up and just hope um, to be on the right side when the customs bill arrive, because it's not very clear how much you will be charged um, for customs. It's very random. I remember I ordered something from Japan, and they charged me £15 in customs. I was like, I hate everything about whoever charged me £15 on a 40 quid item. I still hate you. I still hate you. But, you know, when you're a business, if there are random charges that can be put in, you just make it up and you just put a number on it, basically. And that's the problem this business is facing. There's no kind of, well, there's no real formal list as far as I know of. Let's take an example. One Italian factory had supplied a new price list to include extra VAT tariffs and haulage costs. They've had to assume some costs, so I guess they have a contingency built into it. A ceiling light last year I sold for £185 is uh, I now have to price at £259 because they have a cost list, but there are obviously has to be more money um, than that just in case you get charged more. As a business, you err on the side of caution because if you're charged more than expecting, that's a loss, basically. There's the 40% price hike. I haven't increased my margins. I'm not making any more. The price hike simply covers the new costs I will incur. In reality, it means my margins are reduced, whereas the government gets all that extra cash. Um, that's through customs. Customs forces make the extra money. And the issue, the issue is that this person, this business, will lose out a lot of uh, a lot of sales because that's a huge increase. That 40% increase there. If you know, if I was going to buy a product and it was, you know, I buy it for around £185 and it's suddenly gone up to £259, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I'm looking elsewhere. Companies pulling out of the UK. So German suppliers have been told by their insurance companies that there is a risk of the UK going bankrupt, which, okay, okay German suppliers, like, I think that's a bit, that's a bit of a stretch there, guys. The insurance companies will not therefore sell bad debt insurance for any UK-based business. Uh, we are too much of a, of a risk. As a result, German factories will only sell their goods pro forma. Um, that means they want cash before they sell anything. So you can't buy this stuff um, and just pay it back once you've sold the product or after a certain time. It's all up front. And that, again, is a huge cost for a business, um, especially when they're getting hit on both sides. They import products, um, you know, kind of um, put it together, essentially, in a certain way and then sell them back off. You know, you're getting a cost when you sell the product, but also a huge cost when you buy the product. That's all up front now. This plays havoc with my cash flow. I can and do pay up front, but this isn't a great way to run a business. One Danish company is pulled out of the UK altogether. It's Galing, as I have a decent display and investment in their products, a decent display of goods that I can no longer supply. And what that means is that whole line is gone, which reduces the amount of potential sales this company could have. You know, these are luxury goods, uh, which means they're not necessities. But at the same time, people are obviously big fans of these chandeliers and other products, which if you have less, uh, you know, less kind of um, less of those to display, a smaller range, should I say, a smaller catalogue that does cause problems. They're given a reason to stop selling here is that there is there is too much expense, red tape and hassle to get goods in. It's simply not financial viable, financially viable to sell to us. And, you know, this company, 
this Danish company might fi- may find other people to sell to, but um, they won't be in Britain. That's for sure. We are we are a third country now. It's Brexit, stupid. I know that COVID and the blockage in the Suez has had a small impact on supply, but it's nothing compared to the effects of Brexit. I used to order from any factory in the, in the EU and get the same service as a factory in Birmingham. The minimum charge, the minimum carriage paid orders, orders which don't incur transport costs, were in the region of 100 to 200 pounds. All the orders would come in on a Wagner or a Dasher truck, and I'd have them within three to four days. So, average cost um, around 100 to 200 pounds, right? and three to four days so that's a decent turnaround time if you're ordering products from say germany the czech republic four days to get it across borders is is pretty decent in my opinion if the order was below carriage paid i would be charged around 15 pounds per order for delivery so those are the costs um for carriage is it to do with the train i'm not 100 percent sure but um you can see the costs are there you know between 100 and 200 pounds or 15 pounds per delivery depending on what it is now the minimum value has risen to around £400. So if you think about it, it's doubled or potentially quadrupled, depending on what the normal price that was paid. That's a lot of money for a business, especially as it would be pretty much overnight that cost has gone up. Below that, carriage is added at around £45 per or £45 per order. So essentially, this person's costs have around trebled. And that's a huge increase for a business, especially because they've lost um, some of the range of products. The costs have increased for imports and the cost of increase for exports. So they've been hit all round with a massive range of problems and costs. And that's sad news for this business because it sounds like they were doing well before um, Brexit happened. You know, companies are saying we do not go to the UK. We're not even doing import checks yet we're not even doing import checks yet and these companies are refusing to come to the uk to sell to us um there are issues with um needing a hmrc um tax number which is another problem the the, the way that vat is paid um means that businesses in the eu are reluctant to sell to us because of that we've seen the pull out of certain eu kind of not companies per se but EU, eu kind of stuff you could buy from the eu the range of products clothing they've all pulled out because they don't want to deal with um, HMRC, essentially. More than half of our food is imported, but we are now exporting a lot less since Brexit. Drivers don't get paid if their truck is empty, which is one of the other reasons they wouldn't want to come to the UK, considering that how it worked before was that if a uh, truck was going to, say, from France to, say, Glasgow, um, they could drop that stuff in at Glasgow, then, say, pick up some stuff from Birmingham and take those goods to, say, uh, Berlin. For example, if they if that's how they were running, now those trucks going out are empty because they're going to hit with export checks. You know, goods going from the UK to the EU are all checked, and that has a massive delay, which means that those trucks don't want to make that route or, or don't want to take anything because their lorry is going to be stuck in Dover, and no one wants that. It causes further problems. Instead, they're refusing to come. Trucks on continental roads have um, seen have been seen with visible labels on the rear door saying we do not go to the UK because that's how toxic the situation is right now because of Brexit, because of what people in this country voted for. This is why our warehouses are slowly running out of stock. You know, you can only stockpile for so long and then once that gets depleted, you're in trouble. This will only get worse. It's nothing to do with COVID, everything to do with Brexit. I would say some of it is to do with COVID, but sure, there is no pandemic. Lorry drivers are exempt from quarantine between countries and self-isolation. Did not know that. The government keeps saying that the problem is that lorry drivers are having to isolate. Um, Potentially, that might not be the case, at least between countries anyways. By the looks of things, if they're exempt from self-isolation, why the government keeps saying they're not? Odd. We are not a scapegoat. We are a third country. It's just us alone with Brexit now. So you can see the damage Brexit has done to a um, company who has actually, you know, acknowledged the problem. A lot of companies don't do that. So a massive credit to um, this person who works, who owns this company and David Letts, who wrote this article. The UK is now a third country Britain supply chain crisis. And um, it's an absolute disaster, to be honest, a real disaster. For companies that rely on just-in-time supply and, you know, import certain products, put them together, change them up and export them out back out to the EU. My advice would be just get out of the UK at that point if you can. Just get out. Um, If you can move your factory or your company to an EU country, whichever one it is, you're better off doing that because the UK is dead as an export market for the EU. Um, Once those import checks kick in especially... 
um, we're finished. I, I think we're going to see way more problems than we have done this year. Now it's just this year. It's just exports being hit. Once imports get hit, we're in royal trouble. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.